Hello friends, welcome back to this channel and today we are continuing with our discussion on the configuration of Siemens decentralized bus bar protection schemes using Dixie 4 software. In last three or four sessions, we have already discussed about the configuration of the one and a half breaker scheme in the central unit, then how to allocate the bay units in the central unit. After that, we have discussed about the settings, uh, some of the important settings only. Then we have discussed about the configuration of bay units, what are the meaning of different types of signals. And during those discussions, we have uh, left one important uh, signal that is why CB open status is given to your bay unit and what is the significance of CB open status or CB closed status in your bus bar protection system especially for one and a half breaker scheme, double main schemes and double main in transfer schemes. So we will discuss about the importance of uh, circuit breaker status. Then we will discuss about the end fault protection, the dead zone protection, the implementation of uh, double main and transfer and double main bus bar schemes using a semi-decentralized bus bar protection system. Then we will also discuss about some of the important concepts that is during which conditions your bus bar protection might get blocked. So all these things will be discussed in subsequent sessions. In today's session, we will only discuss about the significance of breaker status in bus bar protection. So if you could recall from the first session, uh, then in the first session during the substation configuration, uh, I have stated that we are considering here for one and a half breaker scheme in which your CT are permanently assigned to your bus zones. So if this is a one and a half breaker scheme for bus 1 and this is for bus 2, then all these CTs coming from bay unit 1, 2, 3, uh, 1, 3, 5, 7 will be assigned to bus 1 irrespective of the status of isolators, that is disconnectors or breaker. But only when your end fault protection is disabled. So now I am going to discuss about the significance of breaker status and then the uh, end fault protection and its impact on the CP assignment in case of your one and a half breaker scheme or double main or double main in transfer scheme. So if you could rec uh, recall from the previous session, then during the previous sessions uh, while discussing about the configuration of bay units, if you see here, in the bay units, uh, I have discussed about the bar slug in the bar slug inside the binary input. I have discussed about some of the inputs like the uh, position of disconnectors, then the R phase, Y phase, B phase, and 3 phase LBB or breaker failure initiation. Suppose one of the input, that is binary input 1, which is as per your scheme is for circuit breaker open position. So suppose I am assigning this to circuit breaker open. So now just select this as OK and close. Once you assign this as circuit breaker when it, when it is coming from your switch yard, uh, then that breaker status will be mapped to the central unit uh, from this bay unit. And uh, now, what is uh, end fault protection? So first of all, if you see up to this point in last sessions or before that, I have said that this end fault protection is a part of bay units and in the bay units, if you open here, the end fault protection was off. With uh, If end fault protection is off, the second setting is also irrelevant. So first of all, I will discuss what is end fault protection, why it is kept off and in which condition we have to keep it uh, uh, on. So first of all, I am going to discuss about end fault protection. So I have already drawn two uh, SLD in a single slide. This is uh, for one and a half CB scheme only. Uh, while discussing about DMT or double main, I will discuss about that case also. So now there can be two different cases. In one case, uh, this is a disconnector followed by breaker, CT, then second disconnector and then your feeder. I am not showing the tie bay, which is uh, suppose here it will be tie bay. And after that, you will be having the second main bus to be other side. So uh, this is the most common scenario in which you are you are having this disconnector breaker sitting and the second disconnector. You can have the second condition also in some substations or in some utilities. You can have a disconnector followed by 
current transformer, then breaker, and then isolator. After that, the feeders will be tapped. So, uh, whether it is case 1 or case 2, the end fault protection is important for both. So, first consider the case 1 and suppose there is a fault between the breaker and CT. So, there is a fault in between a breaker and CT. It is again in the case 2 also, I am considering the fault between a CT and breaker. Now, a, this CT might have numerous or multiple cores. Suppose out of those sub cores, one core is used for your bus bar protection with your star point towards bus bar, and one core is used for feeder protection with your Suppose this second core is for a feeder protection and with a star point towards feeder side and this star point is towards your bus side. So this is the basic configuration. Now suppose there is a fault between your breaker and CT. So this fault is in the uh, bus bar zone. So if this isolators or the disconnectors are closed. So the feeder will also see the fault but it will see the fault in the reverse direction. So feeder will see the fault in the reverse direction. And it will not operate instantaneously. So the important thing, bus bar will see the fault. So this fault will be seen by bus bar. So this is a bus bar fault. And your bus bar relay will issue an instantaneous trip command. So trip command will be issued by bus bar. So bus bar protection will operate. Once your bus bar protection operates, it will trip this circuit breaker and all other circuit breakers which are connected to this bus. So, your uh, this isolator is closed and this isolator or this is also closed. Fault is here, bus bar protection operated and it is used a trip command to this circuit breaker. But even though this circuit breaker opens, this CB opens, your fault could not get cleared because this fault is still being fed through this remote end as well as from the uh, other bus through the tie bay. So, uh, the fault is not cleared. Your uh, bus bar protection operated, bus bar protection operated and CB opened but current is not zero. So after the lapse of 200 millisecond, your LBB protection will operate, LBB protection will operate and this LBB protection will then trip this second CB that is the tie CB and it will send the remote trip command for the isolation for remote end, remote trip plus the adjacent CV. So definitely the fault will be cleared, but it will be cleared in a delayed manner. The fault clearance will be a uh, minimum of 200 millisecond, but it will depend depending upon your bus bar operation time and then followed by your uh, relay accuracy. So it will be in the range of 200 to 300 millisecond and your fault clearance will be delayed. Now consider this case. In this case, uh, again this disconnector is in the closed condition. This disconnector is again in the closed condition and there is a fault between this CT and this breaker. Uh, these types of fault between a CT and fault between a CB and CT, it is called dead zone fault. So now if you stay here, Again, this disconnector is in closed condition, this disconnector is in closed condition, this circuit breaker is in closed condition and there is a fault between this CB and CT. Now in this case, so, uh, this is your start point of line, this uh, second score support the start point will be here for the bus bar. So this fault will be seen by this feeder protection. So the feeder protection will see the fault and it will see the fault in zone 1 and it will issue an instantaneous trip command. Once it issues an instantaneous trip command, so it will trip this circuit breaker, this CB will be tripped and also your second CB, the tie, uh, tie CB will also be tripped. So these two CB will be tripped. Uh, even though uh, this CB and this CB is tripped, your fault is not isolated because the fault is still being fed through your bus bar. So now what happens that since your main protection or the feeder protection has operated and uh, after the operation of feeder protection CB has opened, even though the CB has opened your current is not zero. So again LBB protection will operate and this LBB protection will operate after 200 millisecond the final trip and this final trip will clear the fault through the 
operation or tripping of bus bar. So again, the fault will be cleared, but this is a delayed clearance. In both cases, the fault will be cleared, but through uh, the operation of a breaker failure protection. So uh, this type of situation is not desirable. Uh, the, whenever there is an end zone fault or whenever there is a dead zone fault between a CT and a breaker, this fault will always get cleared uh, in uh, a minimum of 200 millisecond delayed time. So now, if you closely follow these two cases, case 1 and case 2, you can see in both cases, even after the opening of circuit breaker, so even after your circuit breaker opens, current cannot go to zero. Why current doesn't get zero? Because the fault is between the breaker and CT, so the CT will keep on reading the current, and your current is not zero uh, even after CB opening. Uh, so if we design a system, and now uh, again, uh, since the fault uh, current is not immediately vanished after the operation of either the feeder protection or bus bar protection and finally uh, the fault is cleared after the operation of LBB. So in both conditions your fault clearance is through bus bar trip plus LBB trip or through feeder protection feeder trip plus LBB trip. So in both conditions you are having the bus bar operation as well as your feeder tripping. So if we can design a protection system in which if there is the opening of main CB, so main CB is open and if the relay detects a current which is higher than a set threshold and uh, the current is higher than set threshold and CB is open, then your relay instantaneously issues a trip command to bus bar as well as your feeder CBs, that is remote CB or remote trip plus the adjacent tie breaker. So this is the basic end fault protection. So what happens, the end fault protection is a very simple protection which depends upon the status of main CB close. It is an overcurrent protection and it will trip your bus bar plus the feeder with a signal to remote end. So if you closely follow this, the only thing important here is it detects this CB open status. It must get a CB open status. So now from where it will get the CB open status? It will get the CB open status for day unit. So we must have from our drawing, from the scheme drawing, we must have one binary input configured to the CB open status in the Bay unit. Now this Bay unit will communicate to the central unit and in the central unit we have to enable the end fault protection and the uh, settings will be the same as the settings of your LBB protection setting, LBB current setting. So only thing is we have to enable this end fault protection. So now if you see here uh, if you see here in the bay unit, the only thing important for us is just enable this end fault protection that is keep it on and then this time delay for CB open. This time uh, by default is 0 millisecond and we have to keep at it as 0 millisecond only. So whenever the uh, relay detects that your circuit breaker is open, it will immediately on its end fault protection and when uh, enable its uh, end fault protection and whenever the current is higher than the set threshold then your uh, bus bar as well as the feeder will be tripped through the end fault protection uh, trip signal. Uh, now again uh, there is uh, there are two important things that I forgot to mention. The problem is since this protection uh, depends upon the status of main CV. So suppose uh, due to some reason main CV status or main CB is in the closed condition, but its open status is reporting to open status is reporting to the bay unit. So since the open status is reporting, your end fault protection will be in the enabled state. End fault will be enabled, and if the relay sees a current higher than the set threshold, 
then it will immediately issue a trip command to your brake uh, bus path and the failure and this will cause on large scale disturbances so the problem with end fault protection is due to a problem in your auxiliary switch of circuit breakers the protection may maloperate and may create wide spread uh, disturbances or wide spread outages so uh, this protection is generally in most of the utilities this is kept off now the second problem uh, this is a very important thing in case of siemens relay if you can recall from the first session the bay unit uh, the current will be mapped to this bay unit and this uh, uh, current is simply wired hard wired to the bay unit and this will be mapped to the central unit uh, central unit through this uh, substation configuration but now the important thing is if you keep your end fault protection as on then the current of this particular feeder will be mapped to the central unit or will be measured by the central unit only when the circuit breaker is in the closed condition if this circuit breaker is in open condition or if this uh, breaker open status comes in inadvertently then the current of this particular feeder it will be not measured by the central unit and subsequently what happens that since central unit doesn't measure the current of one of the bay unit it will get a differential current i differential corresponding to the current of this particular bay unit and if this differential current is more than your supervision differential supervision then your bus bar protection might get into the block condition so because of a simple auxiliary switch malfunctioning what happens is that your bus bar protection might get blocked bus bar protection might be in the blockage state as well as you might have wide spread outages through the operation of end fault protection because of these two reasons generally most of the utilities keep your uh, end fault protection as off and they keep uh, they take a risk that if there is a fault between a cb and a ct then that fault will be delayed uh, clear delayed and it will be delayed by 200 or 250 millisecond but uh, the chances of wide spread outage due to a single malfunction of auxiliary switch will be completely eliminated so these types of call uh, is generally uh, taken by the utilities uh, uh, the person who are setting the relays or the uh, person who are coordinating the relays with the upstream or downstream feeders. So hopefully whatever concepts are explained in today's, uh, today's session is clear to all of you. And if you like these concepts and if you think that these concepts are beneficial to you and your organization, then you may share this video with your friends so that more and more people get aware about these concepts and they may apply these concepts at their organizations. So thank you. And in the next session, we will discuss about the end zone protections in uh, double main and then the combi coupler and protest all other things that we will discuss in the coming sessions. So once again, thank you. We will meet again shortly.